Well, hi, everyone, and welcome back to Pushing the Limits this week with Lisa Tamati. I am really excited for today's conversation. I've turned up another amazing superstar, a top athlete for you guys to enjoy learning from today. I have Conrad Smith. Conrad, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you for the introduction. Good to be here. <laughs> You hardly need an introduction, especially to people living in New Zealand. Um, a legendary All Black. Um, you played for how many years? I think it was 2004 oh, to, four to 15. Yeah. 15 as, a, as an All Black, as a winger. Um, you've been a, the captain of the Hurricanes. You've done, you've got an OBE. You've been, I don't know, player of the year and um Sportsman of the Year in Wellington, you, you, your accolades are such a, a huge list, Conrad. <laughs> so it's a bit, <laughs> and you're blushing already, I can see. <laughs> um, <laughs> but really, you know, like uh, an incredible uh, athletic career. And you were also talented as a cricketer, I understand. Not probably, not Way everyone back. knows When that. I was a little fella, when I was a little fella. <laughs> <laughs> but I, was too, I was too little for rugby, so I uh, played more cricket, but yeah. <laughs> And then you grew. <laughs> Life in New Zealand, a New Zealand kid back then anyway. Yeah. But yeah, then I grew up, that's right. Yeah, then you grew up and you were big enough to take on the, on the big boys. <laughs> so, Conrad, give us a little bit of a, a spiel, like where you um, grew up and how much of an influence did your childhood have on, you know, what you ended up doing with the rugby career? Yeah, uh, yeah so I was, um, well, I was actually born down in Hawara, uh my father was a policeman, so we moved around with him a little bit in the early years, and then um, but moved to New Plymouth uh, when I was about six. And um, but yeah, very very close family. He um, you know gave a lot of time. My mum and dad um, you know would always make time for the kids. There was my, a couple older brothers, a younger sister, and uh, yeah, it was it was a great childhood. You know, a lot of sport um, was played, but you know, we all did pretty well academically, which my parents laugh at because both of them never made it. I don't think past <laughs> about 13 or 14 at school. Oh, wow. Um, wow. But just really, really supportive parents in terms of, um, you know, and I, it's funny, I, I probably took it for granted then, but I don't ever remember my parents ever not being there or, or having to work, you know, like everything we did, we always were supported and there were, they were there to whether it was just drive us there or coach our teams or try and help us with our homework or it was just um I, I think that was what I've you know like I say I took for granted but now um being older I realize how important that was and and why we're still such a you know close family and my brothers and my best mates my sister is my my best girl mate and um yeah we still obviously we're all sort of have moved around the world but we're sort of pretty um close together again and um yeah and I, I suppose I'd, I try to be now with my own family you know dad like my dad was to me and yeah. um yeah so that was those were the the luckiest break I had I suppose I always say people talk about luck and especially in sport but you know for me it was just the the family I was born into and and the sport I um had as a young fella yeah no that's brilliant and, and you had a couple of kids yourself yeah yeah now we've got um the two of them just about to go off to school but um yeah Luca is uh yeah almost seven and he um we had him in New Zealand and then um, our daughter was actually born over in France while I you know was over there for four or five years and um yeah she's come back with us and yeah she's a Kiwi again us. hopefully yeah 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 <laughs> um yeah let's I mean you know um Growing up in the, well, you grew up in the 80s. I grew up in the 70s, so I'm showing my age now. <laughs> but I think in the 80s, it was still very much, you know, like an outdoorsy lifestyle, eh? And, and like that good Kiwi kid upbringing, especially in Taranaki, eh? Because, you know, we both come from, from here. Um, and having that, uh, being outdoors in nature all day. I mean, as kids, we were, we never came home before dark sort of thing. Was that the same in your household? Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, like I say, you know, two older brothers, um, they were pretty influential in what I did, you know, so I'd just sort of hang around, tail off them. Um, but, yeah, very, very much. We we were always out. I just think of my childhood, it was all about 
playing sport, finding areas to play sport, you'd sort of get pushed out of, you know, we'd try and play inside and then we'd get pushed out to the garden and would ruin the garden or ruin the <laughs> lawn. And, you know, you're just constantly finding places to, you know, do what yeah, guys do and with a with a ball and a you know you can do anything and 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 now the, and then you know my, the wider family were farmers so um my dad was uh on the farm he sort of got kicked off by his older brother but we the, the, that was a family farm and so we would head out that way and and that's out douglas you know from stratford on the way to yep um and that's been in the family for three or four generations and and that would be where we'd head for you know we'd help with the um, haymaking we'd help with carving we'd help all, all sorts and they were that was pretty much my favorite hot holiday and, and the same with all of us kids would be to go spend some time there and um, the help farm. help on the farm and yeah just that, that was just a childhood you know you awesome. dream that you know yeah you just endless things to do and always outside didn't matter if it was raining and cold as it often is out in those parts but you know you, you just put a coat on and uh, carry on oh man that just just takes me back to my childhood and I often think man I want to go back hey <laughs> <laughs> what happened to that simple life that we had uh, when we were kids and um you know you're, you're, you're like you know very lucky to have such wonderful parents obviously and such a cool family um you also went off then to to university and became a lawyer <laughs> As you do, yeah. as well as an all black. <laughs> a slight overachiever there, Conrad. <laughs> um, <clears throat> was that, you know, did you always want to be a lawyer? I mean, apart from, you know, wanting to be an all black. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, like, so as I sort of said before, I wasn't, um, you know, a huge overachiever on the, on the sport front. Well, I mean, like I went to, you know, Francis Douglas, it, it's not a huge sporting school. Um, and so it was still, you know, we had sporting teams, but um, that was very much, you know, part of it. You, you were there to study, you were there to get an education. And, um, and I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed school. I, I, I think, um, you know, it is a great school. And a lot of my mates now are, are still from the mates I made in my school years. And, uh yeah so I, I didn't mind class and and I never had a I, I, I suppose I you know leaving high school as it was then I was going to go to university my brothers had both done that um it was sort of the <laughs> the thing to do and <laughs> law was um you know it, it was something I, I enjoyed you know English history those sort of uh subjects at school and, and Wellington wasn't too far. I, I, would, I sort of wanted to go down to Dunedin. My brother was down there and that was the, the, the scarfy life was, uh, was yeah, appealing. Yeah. <laughs> but he, 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 was, he sort of talked me out of it just because he, I think he'd done about four years by that stage and flying down and getting oh, himself yeah. back and forth was, was pretty tough. So he sort of said, well, if you don't have to, go to, you know, be go closer to, to home. And, yeah. and, that, and that was how I ended up in Wellington. And and I really enjoyed law um, and rugby. Yeah, like I say, sport was was great, but it was two nights a week. It wasn't taking over my life as I know it does to a lot of um, kids nowadays. You know, they make academies and whatnot. And yeah. we could maybe talk about get, whether that's a good that. thing or a bad thing. But yeah. for me, I was I was able to, you know, finish a finish a full law degree and and. Um, and wow. luckily that sort of perfectly dovetailed into when I started playing professionally and um yeah it was it was just sort of fortunate for me in terms of the way it all worked out and the timing but um it was something I was uh yeah very grateful for obviously yeah yeah because you, you know like now and like your career where well, you know your your playing career at least is is over you've got something to to, to do you know you've got a you've got a qualification you've got a so just you know if, if we if we dive into that subject a little bit um so a lot of the young guys now um are coming through and they're sort of getting picked out early along the way <clears throat> what sort of dangers do you see with that that system yeah i i do worry about it and i've sort of you know have spoken about it before i, I just uh because it's not just in rugby you know it's in all sports there's sort of a real um, obsession towards um, you know identifying talent young and and then you know 
the, the, the excuses are you're giving them the best chance of success. So we're going to do all this um, work with them and specialize them and make them concentrate on their sport. But firstly, I, I don't know if that actually um, helps them with their sport a whole lot. I, I think it's fine to, to keep a balance and to play other sports and to um, experience, just live a normal life. I, I think you can still excel. Um, but the other thing is that, you know, if it doesn't work out or even if it works out, sports a short term yeah. industry, you know, I know yeah. it's not forever. And when you get to the back end of that, if you've, you know, purely invested in one sport, um, when the time runs out, you got to rebuild your life you? again. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and that's a real problem. And you don't need to look far to find a lot of uh, evidence about that. I mean, we benefit in rugby looking at American sports because I've been professional a lot longer than we have. And some of the statistics is just shocking, you know, and, and people would think that <clears throat> they are paid so much money, the athletes in, in those sports and in America, that they should be able to, you know, mm, live do a business or easily yeah. after or do whatever they want. They, they, you know, theoretically, they have enough money just to retire, but... <clears throat> You, the statistics are not like that at all you know you have crazy number of bankruptcy crazy number of you know rates of yeah. depression because these you know they haven't learned to live outside of their sport and yep. um and that's sort of been taken away from them because they're placed into their sport so young and then um and then they're just cut yep. and and there's no real um assistance around that so yeah, that, I mean, that's an extreme example and we're nowhere near at that stage, you know, here with the way um, the academies and that are set up. And, and I know most of the people involved are very mindful of, of the things we, you know, I've just talked about. But mm, mm. That's brilliant yeah, to I, just I, open that conversation though and, and to be talking yeah, about that. Yep. I, I just think there's a lot to be said around letting young people be young people. I, I, I look at myself and... Um, you know, my from that period of development where maybe nowadays I'd be in an academy, I was let to play multiple, you know, I played cricket, but I played basketball, I ran, I did athletic, you know, it was all these things. And who's to say, you know, what lessons I learned from those other sports that I mm. actually used in rugby because there is so much, you know, that, that you can pick up and and also being able to study and um and for me to have a degree, the the benefits that gave me to deal with, you know, injuries, to deal with, you know, all the downsides of sport, because I had a background in, in, in education, I, it, it's really helpful, you know, you relax Absolutely. a lot more, you get a perspective on um, these sorts of things that if you're just wrapped up in a sport and you get an injury, man, it's, it's tough, it's, you know, you can't do what you yeah, you're like who, you're yeah. meant to do. Yeah, yeah. who like wh where do you turn? But I think if you've had a bit of of a bit of an education, and it doesn't have to be a, a law degree, you know, you can. But if you've got some other life or or other opportunities and options um, that you can turn to in those times, and and it gives you perspective and a sense of reality, and and you don't get so caught up in it. So uh, yeah, it's it's uh, you know, I just. I know it's it is appreciated. I just think it may be still underrated by um, a lot of the people that yeah. you know are setting up these these academies and, and things for the for the young sportsmen. Yeah, and it's a good conversation to have and just to be open about and, and because you know you're one injury away from the end, ending your career at any time. Yeah, and then to build it's like building a, a sort of a house on a foundation of sand. If you if you haven't got something else and you haven't got the life skills, you know if I, if I um, just look at the opposite extreme with with my sport where you have you know like when I started just a bunch of weirdos doing crazy stuff right <laughs> there's no mm. there's no structure there was no support there was no knowledge um but it taught me to f it taught me that I had to go and market myself I had to go and push everything that if I if I even when I represented New Zealand I had to buy my own singlet to wear at the thing you know let alone get yeah, there and do yeah. all the things so you had to market yourself present yourself become a speaker do all of this sort of stuff in order to so you you through that you you learned a lot of life skills anyway and then it was never yeah. a professional sport in the, in the sense I, I i managed 
to live off my sport for a number of years. Um, but that was an exceptionally, but just because I, <laughs> I, I found ways to do that, you know, but it wasn't yeah. like a, a pathway that anybody could follow. Um, and it, 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 but it taught me to fight. I remember having this conversation with my brother Dawson, who I know was one of your heroes when you were a little fella. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother yeah. Dawson was a, a you know Hurricanes player and uh, Super Rugby and Taranaki and, and international uh, as well. Um, and and when I came back from um, Austria and I came back to New Zealand and I was raising money to go to Death Valley, which was a big race for me. Um, and he was like, why are you in the media? Like, why you, why you want to be? I used to hide from the damn media. And I'm like, yeah, but you got everything given to you, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, got, you got all your clothes, all your gear. All, you got stuff gifted to you left, right, and center. You've actually got no idea <laughs> what the what another sport has. You know, like that, that structure, that framework's not there. Um, and, and that's good and that's bad, you know. But yeah. you, when you have everything laid on for you, yeah. But you haven't had to fight in society for your things. Because I've talked at a lot of rugby clubs, actually, around the, around the country uh, to all the young guys. And, um, and you know, they, 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 they do that. Everything is laid out for them, mm. you know, and they don't really have to, they don't have to, they have to fight. They've got a lot of pressure as far as performance and all of that sort of side goes. But the rest of life is sort of taken care of. Um, so it's something to be wary of, I think, if you've got young ones and um, going up through that system is to just think about what is the fallback option here? <laughs> what else can, are they going to do when the career is over? Because it can be very short. And not everybody reaches the stardom that you did. You know, not everyone yeah. gets to play for the All Blacks for 94 games or, you know. And, and it, like we talk about like the bubble, you know, they use that um, term a lot within you know sports so you you've come into this bubble where you, where it's you're, you're t you, you and you can the longer you stay in that bubble you lose touch with reality you actually have no and this is what you're saying and i know yeah. it because i've seen it and and i used to like i'd use that same terminology and say come on like i'd talk to the guys like i've got to get out of the bubble you know you gotta wow. and, and it was always a thing of because people would you know, and you'd see it with people that get drawn into a um, sporting career and if they're doing really well. And, and you're right, it's only in New Zealand, it's it's probably only really rugby. I mean, there are other sports now that um, guys pay, get paid really well, but generally they have to head overseas. So, um, but yeah, it, it, you, be, you get drawn into a lifestyle where everything is laid on and you don't actually, you, you forget how, the you know and real people <laughs> live and the real yeah. life is yeah. and but the bubble bursts and it, it all come about and this is this is what I'm saying the more time you spend in that bubble when it bursts it, the harder it is to you know the fall can really um take a lot of, to get it used to it and some people don't and you know like I've unfortunately even the guys I've played with you know I've got as many stories of guys who are struggling, still struggling, as the guys who fell on their feet. You know, wow. I don't think anyone does straight away. Even you know myself, people will say, "Oh, you know, you handled it well." I mean, I've been retired three, just over three years, and I knew, and and everyone said to me, like, it's at least two years before you even yeah. feel. You know, there's still things you'll struggle with, and and that was spot on. You know, yeah. it's it just takes a lot of time to. To understand that you, you're never going to get up in the morning and have that same dry like you, you're very lucky to when you're in a as a sportsman or woman um to have that drive just to be yeah, a bit of sport singular really special yeah yeah and, you know, um, yeah totally but you, you've got to find something else and and it'll never replace it and it's not meant to but you it's it's the challenge for everyone and um but yeah like, like you know sort of we've, all, we've been talking about those life experiences during that sporting career are so important so that you know when the bubble bursts when when you come out of it it's um it, it's just a little bit easier to to find your feet because uh yeah otherwise it, it, it is tough and it's um it's a bit of a worry yeah yeah exactly i mean in in and just on even from the identity of being this athlete and you had a singular purpose pretty much every day when you got up it was to train and it was to be the best for the next game or the next mm. whatever 
and and that gets taken away and then the complexity of life comes at yeah and um i mean i i i retired from doing ultra marathons at 48 and so what you know it's a, it's a sport where you can go a lot longer and i've got you know mates who are still in their 60s and 70s doing it but what i do see uh, often in the in the ultra running community is um they don't know anything else, so I'm going to stick with what I know, and I'm just going to beat the crap out of my body until it falls into the ground, <laughs> rather than going, "Hang on a minute, this is not, um, this is no longer conducive to what I really want for me," and 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 reassessing. And with rugby, you're you're forced to because you you can, you know physically at 48 you wouldn't be able to keep up with the 20 year olds yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and so there's a, there's that whole have you struggled i know i've struggled um with that whole identity like who the hell am i if i'm not that uh, hard ass athlete and i'm not being i'm not able to do what i used to do you know because i still get like I, I get it in the in the running thing you know like, oh a marathon must be you know you must do that before breakfast and i'm like yeah, no, nah, that's not. <laughs> now a five k is quite long. You know what I mean. Uh, um, and, and so you, your your horizon comes back in. You know, so I've spent you know decades pushing my horizon out to be able to go longer, 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 bigger. And then you know life happens. And in my case, it was mum, and that was the end of the career, and so on. You know, because and yeah. it was high time. It was overdue. Um, but that that whole like, oh, you know. Yeah. you just had the rug pulled out from under you and your identity is tied up in that performance you know did you find have you found that a struggle yeah yeah I think and like I say everyone does I it, it, you're lying if you you say it's it's um if people do it easy it's uh and, and again I I think a lot of the work you know hopefully athletes that handle it better um, have 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 thought about that what during their career and they don't you know and we, and we were given some great support you know while I was playing um, particularly within the All Blacks you know guys like Gilbert Anoka with a background um, in in the whole mental side of of not just the game but of of life you know in, in terms of keeping being grounded keeping perspective and part of that was your identity and not letting rugby define you and, and so that you were a we used to say you're a per, you're a person that plays rugby. You're not yeah. a you're no. not a rugby player. You know that has this other life. You're a, you're actually a you know I'm, I, I play rugby because I like playing rugby. That's not who I am. That that's okay. what the public see. And and I think if you get a get a handle on that while you're playing, then you understand that when right rugby's taken away, but that's not part of you know that's just that's what I used to do now I'm not doing it anymore but I'm still the person I've been this whole way you know mm -hmm. now my journey carries <laughs> on and and like I say that's easier said than done but um but for those you know like like I say there's there's people that become the rugby player that's all they are and um and and so that's that's a real challenge yeah and and you know so so for me it was it was about um just finding other challenges and I think you know anyone in terms of rugby or any sport you know yourself when you found you find other challenges it gives you it give you you realize your own identity and, and you find other things to do um, that give you fulfillment and and I think aligned with that is the whole you know when I, when I think of rugby players a lot of them who find the identity in rugby they then just they go into coaching and this is a real problem um, and it might, I don't think it's just with the sport of rugby, but you know, you get a lot of retired players that feel like they have to coach because yeah. that's, that's, they think all they that's know. all they know. They think, yeah. yeah, but they, you know, and the challenge I, I suppose now, and, you know, I've, I've been um, careful not to fall into that trap because, you know, the, the, and it was easier for me. I mean, I, I studied, like I say, I was like, man, I used to be a lawyer. I'm sure I could go back and do that. You know, yeah. I'd, maybe not as a lawyer, but there are other skills that I have. And, and that's um, that's a really hard message, but it's a really important message to give um, all sportsmen, but like to rugby players, I'm always telling them, you know, you, you don't have to stay in rugby. You know, you've played, you've finished. You don't have to coach. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's there's going to be hundreds of thousands of players 
finishing careers and they think they have to coach yep. but you know their skills are transferable to hundreds of different professions and things that will pay them well oh. that will you know and, and you can keep being yourself and um but yes, yeah and, and so and even for me like I've stayed within rugby but it's it's not coaching and it's um you know I'm a, working with the player association international player association and, and that's that suits me. That's my skill set. It's a bit of you know the law, the the analytical side of me that I've always had, and um, and yeah, you know, I, I think that was important um, as sort of my process of of moving away, um, you know, from that identity as just Conrad Smith, the rugby player. Yeah, it's um, it's important to find you know other other things that that challenge me and that I enjoy. That's that's awesome, and thanks for sharing that because I think that's uh, you know being able to um, openly have these conversations because you know, there are a lot of athletes and lots of different sports struggling with this whole process of, and and, and, your, and your career is so short and you're not a has been you know like I often have you know these conversations with myself especially at the beginning it's like oh you're you're nothing now you you you're a has been you you haven't you're not you can't do it now and being embarrassed about that instead of going hang on a minute I'm still pretty freaking epic and I do other stuff and and now that's yeah. freed up a huge piece of my brain and my my daily power in energy to then go and attack other massive projects and there's so many yeah. things in the world that you can take on you know and it's all up to you as to, to, to develop a certain passion and I think it's not even in um it's not even just in the sports realm I see you know like um, people who are in careers that you know, I've got friends and careers who they don't want to be there anymore, but they, yeah. they studied it, they became it, they did it, you know, whatever it was. And and now they're like, oh, is that it? You know, and I'm like, it doesn't have to be it. No, <laughs> um, we, we live in a day and age where we can actually go and retrain. And, and in fact, we have to be adaptable and flexible in this day and age if we want to keep up because the world is changing so fast. So many jobs are going to be gone and, you know, whole industries um i mean i was a jeweler in a previous life that that industry got destroyed really you know like if, if you weren't in the big game with you know big brands and uh chinese sort of mass production and stuff like that and you were an artisan and a person who made one-off pieces you're struggling now unless you really got the top you know massive diamonds and god knows what everyone else is struggling you know so you have to go okay that industry's changed. I'm going to have to adapt, change, go with it, you know, and overcome it, um, improvise and, and keep developing. And I think that's the message that we're getting here is, you know, you, you don't, don't box yourself in. Yeah. Don't just be that one trick pony. That's not. Yeah. And Conrad is now you know, an advocate. He's, he's, he's a father. He's, you know, he's a speaker. He's a, you know, whatever you decide that you want to be, you can become and you're not just Conrad the, the All Black. Um, yeah. And I think that's a really important transition for everybody to go through. And, and, and even if you're a, you know, a policeman or a teacher and you don't want to do that anymore, whatever the case is. Yeah, and, and it takes a bit of courage, though, eh? Like, it, it's easier, like I said before, it's easier said than done a lot of the times, and mm. and that's what people just need that encouragement to, um, you know, like, especially when you're, you know, you add finances and people suddenly, oh, you know, I've got a mortgage on a house, I, I don't yeah. want to change a career because yeah, there'll be yeah, a, yeah. there might be a layover where I'm not earning money, and but yeah, I, I just think that's you come back to some you know, big questions about. Who you are, who you want to be, and and you know you got to be, you got to yeah, be happy doing what easy. you're doing. So, yeah. um, I I just think yeah, all, all the help you can get from people around you, that's where you'll draw the energy. I think if if it's a conversation you're just having in your own mind, you'll never get anywhere. You just need to open up about it, speak to people close to you, and um, I, I think that's generally where the answers come from. Yeah, I think that's that's gold. And on that point, you know, how big is like like mental health in, in your in your work do you do a lot around you know supporting mental health and that sort of thing and helping people transition and, and all that sort of jazz yeah absolutely and um and more and more like it's it's um uh, it's a complex field uh you know when you talk about players in in the game you know in, in the sport of rugby uh it's it's 
it's really difficult. We we're starting to appreciate the pressures I think that um, sportsmen and women are under in, in these fields. But you know, it's and it's a lot of it draws it back on what we were talking about before, how you you're in a bubble and, and you do lose perspective and and so a lot of the lot of the challenge is is to help these young you know these kids that are that are in these bubbles to to keep their perspective and and keep living and look at sport as this amazing opportunity and not and not feel the pressure and well maybe and and saying not feel the pressure is the wrong way wrong way to put it because it's natural but to to feel the pressure and and find a way to deal with it, a healthy way to deal with it because I think that's um and again you know I look back on my career and you look you're playing for the All Blacks you're playing World Cups it's easy to talk about pressure and and to feel it but you know if if there was one it was always you know there was never times that I didn't know how to deal with it and that was from the support I had and, and maybe the the background and my upbringing but it was it was easily you just channeled that instead and and wow. look at it differently and just say look it's a it's opportunity a it's an opportunity that every every time you feel pressure you can, it's a simple I love um, it. it's just changing the perspective on things you know and yeah. rather than the pressure of oh in all black you have to win I'm an all black you know I want to win because whatever I've got a country behind me you know and suddenly it's a burden flipped and it's it. lifted and yeah, you flipped it and you're, you're puffing out your chest and you and you want to do it. And, um, and then, you know, if it doesn't come off, hey, it's, it's a game. You know? you, you've yeah. got these more important things, um, you know, and absolutely this- around. So uh, that, that, that's, but yeah, it, it's like I keep saying, it, it, it's um, not easy for everyone. And there's people that understand it better. And then it's the, the, the challenge um, is, is getting through to people of different backgrounds and different cultures and different ages. Yeah, yeah, you know. with different problems. You know, when yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm saying it because I know what worked for me, but I know a 17-year-old young Samoan boy who's playing rugby, I don't know, for the Highlanders, or I might not be able to connect with that. And the things that work for me won't work for him. I yep. think that's what I'm trying to say. Or yep. the, the, you know, the female... Um, swimmer who's doing you know trying and training for an olympics you know we're all different and um the, the challenge is finding a way for, for everyone to to deal with that pressure and to to you know be mentally yep. healthy through a through a sports career yeah and that's uh, yeah and, and i love that approach and you know just coming off the back of the olympics you know it was just wonderful to watch how amazing athletes doing amazing things i mean lisa carrington just blows me completely <laughs> away yeah. like she's mentally just like um uh, insane but um but i love that thing of the ch- challenge versus threat you know i think this is a really important thing to do when you're feeling overwhelmed and overburdened and like like the whole world of pressure is on me and you know like you going out in something like the, the world cup you know had, were you able even in those like extreme pressure moments to turn that into an opportunity and not a threat you know because that does change the physiology like when you're running on the paddock on those days you know those couple of times in your life where it's just been horrifically big pressure how did how did you physically and mentally cope there yeah, I, I think, you know, we spent a lot of time, um, and, and everyone did, and um, preparing for that World Cup. And, and again, I sort of, as All Blacks, you, you have to spend a lot of time because you know the pressure that comes with and the expectation that comes with being an All Black in New Zealand. Um, but even more so, a World Cup, a home World Cup, when we hadn't won, you know, I think of 2011. Uh, and so a lot of our preparation time wasn't just spent on the field with how we're going to play, but was how to deal with that pressure. And, and yeah, for for me, it was just constantly turning it around so that it was never a moment. Like I even, I mean, I can look back and think of times in the game where, um, you know, the team was under pressure and it would be perceived as, you know, even in that final hour that the team struggled a bit with the pressure, but you know, if I'm being honest, it, it, our preparation never let us feel that way. Like it was, awesome. uh, yeah, we, we were dealing with that all the time. We just were focused on on doing a job. We talked so much about 
whatever comes our way, we were going to adapt and deal with it. And, and that's what you just had to keep doing. You never sort of stop. And, and you'll know this yourself. You just don't let yourself stop and think about that. I, I think if you've got to that stage, it's too late. If you're, if you're having to like go through a process or oh, how, how do I deal with this? It, it's probably too late. You, you've already hopefully um, got a process in place where you're just immediate and it's just instinctively, you're just channeling that, um, focusing on little details, you know, because you, you know, whatever the pressure, it, it's not going to influence you unless you let it, you, you just focus on the, you know, small tasks and, and you get through 80 minutes of rugby like that keep a smile on your face and pull your focus into the, the yep. job at hand instead of the, Oh my God, everyone's watching me. Yep. Everyone's pressuring, yep. you know, it's, it's just like, hang on a minute. I've just got to pass this ball right now. You know, whatever the yeah. case is. You just been and in... actually breaking it down into little yep. tiny And you'd all have little trigger words. And, and I know, you know, we talk about just be in the now, be in the now, yep. which is, you know, like, like just what you're talking about. It's, it's not thinking about the, mistake you might have just made the ball you dropped the tackle you missed and, and it's, it's not worrying and you're not thinking about the world cup you're going to win at the end of this game because you can't yeah. do anything but right right now it. right now what can i like right now i'm going to catch this next ball yeah i'm going to you know look up keep looking keep calling whatever it is but you know it's as simple as a little thing like that that just keeps you in tune with the the moment and not letting you get overwhelmed yeah, by amazing. you know the bigger picture but um yeah they're, they're massively important obviously the the bigger the moments and the bigger the pressure it's it's the funny thing is it's the more important that you, yeah, just you have to do focus on often. the smaller well and you, and you focus on the smaller and the minute detail oh i love it and it, you know like it um i used to like in t try to forget the consequences of what you're doing you know like mm. um you know, you've done the preparation, you've done the work, you've done everything that you possibly can to stand on the start line of, in my case, a race, um, and then letting go of the outcome because you've done what you can do and now it's up to the the, the whatever happens in the next few hours, mm. you know, or days in, in my case. So, in the, so it was no longer just in your hands then because the gods have a, a thing to say about it as well. <laughs> Yeah. And sometimes you, if you try and control the uncontrollable, then you'll drive yourself to, you know, madness. Whereas if you can go, I've done the stuff that I was responsible for. I've put the work in. I've done the preparation. I know my strategies. I know my pacing. I know whatever it is I'm doing. I got that, right? Okay. I'm going to keep my eye on the ball here, but I'm going to let go of the outcome now. Yeah. Because when you let go of the outcome, then that pressure goes and you're in that, being in that now is, is a really a, a powerful message to people. We're like, because when you're in the past or the future, you're either worrying about the future or you're regretting what's happened in the past or, or, or it's a load for you to carry. And in the moment where you're under pressure, all you can cope with is that second right now, the next, the next minute, that's it. You mm. can't, and when, when, when I was running long distances, I would break it down um you know into the what's the next the next power pole you know i just got to get to the next power pole and if i can't even get that far well, i've just got to take one more step and you can always take one more step right and if you yeah, break yeah, it down yeah. into one more step just one more and then you just keep going and keep going and then and invariably that mindset or that thing that's in your head passes and then you're back on back in the game yeah yeah, yeah. You know? I, I, it's funny you sound because someone I remember um, that came and spoke to the team um, when I so I joined the team in 2004 and we had Hamish Carter mm -hmm. came and spoke to the team and it was before the 2007 World Cup and obviously that World Cup didn't end well but <laughs> his, some of what he said was still I, I, I still remember it and he was talking about his Olympic performances and he said and I think um, one of the questions from the players was about what we're talking like, the nerves and the pressure of, and, he, and I remember him saying that he wasn't nervous. He wasn't nervous when he got to the start line, just for the reasons you said, he said, because then I backed all my prep, I'd done everything I ne needed to do. And, and now it was just a matter of going out and doing it. Like yeah. you, you can't do any more. And it's funny that when I look, especially towards the end of my career, 
the only times like I would feel nervous normally on the, the start of a week. So if yeah. we played a game on a Saturday, and yeah. that was because I'm I'm nervous thinking of all the things I've got to do on the Monday, Tuesday. But by the Friday, I I would have this real sense of calm because you done it, it all. And, and, and I was actually, and I'd have a smile and I'd be like, right, now it's time to do it. And yeah. it's funny because people for the, the spectator, it's the opposite. They're not thinking about a game on Monday, Tuesday, but then they're all getting nervous on a, before a game starts thinking, oh, you must be even worse. But yeah, it, it was be, it would be, that yeah, was the gone. way I could explain it is that, well, really I was nervous thinking about the game and, but now I've done all that. I've, this is the, you know, the path I've taken. This is the training I've done for this game. And now I'm ready to, you know, going to go enjoy it and, and see if it works. And Yeah, this um, is the reward phase, you know. That's why I yeah, used to yeah. say to myself, this is actually the what you've been preparing for all along. So this is the time when you actually should be enjoying it, you know. Yeah. And, and it, it wasn't always that easy, especially when you're, you know, doing a couple of hundred K somewhere because, <laughs> you know, sometimes not that pleasant. <laughs> it was there, a bit different, Lisa. But, yeah. <laughs> but, it, but you've done the work to get to the start line. And it, it, the times where I have been nervous is when I hadn't done the work. Exactly. You know, and that's the I same. I, I, I think of some, you know, and I, I don't like admitting it, but, you know, when normally with All Blacks, you bet you I'd always have ticked every box, but there were games, you know, I'd go back, even the Hurricanes or some club games, and that's the ones where I'd be nervous because yeah. I'd be thinking, I you know, I haven't, I haven't really, you know, nailed this week. I probably haven't done. And so then you'd get nervous. But actually, the, big, the bigger the occasion, the preparation's normally good. And so uh, that, that's how you deal with the Because you took it seriously. And you, yeah. yeah, yeah, I've come unstuck on some short races where I've had my ass handed to me because I went in with a like, oh, that's just, yeah. you know, that's just a short race. And oh my God, you know, had my ass handed to me. So yeah, always respect the <laughs> every, every distance or every game, <laughs> I think is key. What's it actually like, Conrad, to be, like was it the first time that you put on that All Blacks jersey? Because that's like, you know, every little boy and now little girl's dream too. Because, you know, what, what's it actually like to put on that silver film for the first time? Can you remember? Yeah, oh, for sure. It's um, it's pretty special. I, 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 I do think I was really lucky the way it um, panned out for me in, in terms of it happened really quickly. And uh, so, you know, I'd play, I hadn't even played a super rugby game. I hadn't played for the Hurricanes. Well, I hadn't started. I had a really, um, you know, uh, I was playing for the Wellington Lions. We made the final and then I was picked. Um you know, fortunately, that so the coaching staff that had come in wanted to pick some new younger players, and I was one of those. It was very much sort of out of the blue, uh, and then I was starting the following week. So I'd played a, a final. Um, the team was picked. We assembled the end of that following week. We flew to Italy, and then I was playing. So I, <laughs> wow! I, yeah, and and it was, um, but that was that was great in hindsight because it didn't let me no overthink it yeah <laughs> I, it was sort of like okay and I just was like right a little bit like what I said before I'm just going to enjoy it and admittedly there were people around me Graham Henry Wayne Smith Steve Hansen great coaches and, and Gilbert Anoka that were giving me those messages you know like just telling me we're picking you in the first game just go and enjoy it like we, we're not ex just keep doing what you're doing we love what you're doing and so those messages you know for a young guy um, were perfect and so you know I to answer your question that yeah I just took the jersey it was still sort of pinching myself how quickly <laughs> it all happened um, but yeah then then I, there I was playing and um, yeah it, it was a amazing experience and yeah I'm, I'm glad to say it's it's it never really diminished you know I was lucky to play for over a decade and um, it was still it was always special putting on the jersey the the team, you know, does a great job, I think, of, of respecting the jersey, yeah. acknowledging how important it is um, to, to our country, you know, what, what we mean to everyone and, and staying grounded and all, all that good stuff about, um, yeah, acknowledging the connection that you have with the, the, the young men and women who are dreaming to being all black wishing they were there would give anything to be you know yeah. in your place so you're always uh, aware of that and so it, it never 
loses, um, you know, it, it's glow in terms wow. of putting the jersey on. You still, uh, you, you feel like I, Brian, Sir Brian Lahore, who was a big part of the, the team um, when I joined, said, he, he said, when you put the jersey on, uh, you shouldn't be able to fit outside the, the doorway. You know, you, you throw <laughs> that thing. <laughs> I'm not using the words and, and it was yeah, so true you know. and I always like you know for me I was normally be marking someone bigger than me or I was normally not the biggest in the room but I always felt that that I have to turn sideways to get out the door um, but that that was the sort of feeling and and you wow. hear that even That's today amazing. you know the the way you sort of you grow in the jersey and um, you're carrying the 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 mana and the tradition of that in the reputation of that, in the in the hopes of a nation, basically on your on your shoulders, which can be a, either a load or it can be like, wow, how lucky am I that I get to stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before, basically. And like you say, yeah, yeah I can't fit through the door because I'm just filled with all that, you know. Um, I tell you just a, a, a very quick anecdote. I was running through in, the, in Gobi in the Gobi Desert at one point, and um, and we were running through these slot canyons, these really crazy, it was hot, like one guy died out there that day, which was really terrible. But we, I was running through there and I was chasing down this American woman who was in front of me and I was second, right? And, and I'm like, I've got to pull out something here if I want to get, you know, beat this, this person in front of me that I was chasing down through these canyons. And so I started singing the Maori Battalion song to myself, you know? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and I started to like like the, the my my ancestors and my traditions and my 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 heritage like I'm gonna bloody beat you American you know like I'm gonna chase you down and I'm singing away to myself and I'm running along through this canyon and and I beat her right it was awesome I just went yeah. smashing past her and I and I and I beat her um but it was just like wow it's just like you know you're, you're pulling out stuff that you it's not just you you're like yeah. your 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 ancestors and your heritage are there uh, empowering you. So I imagine it's a bit the same with the All Blacks jersey, you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, powerful stuff. Like you, it you're is. spot on, and it's um it's all about you know creating something bigger than you. Like there's no doubt, like the history of team sport, or like you say, even individual sports. Uh, you know, as soon as you can create that connection um to, to a bigger a greater cause you know and and actually the all blacks it, it's actually easy you know, I, I say this um you know when i talk to other sports teams around how they're going to create their identity but the all blacks like it's handed to them because they have 130 years or whatever it is of this um you know, amazing history. performance of this history this black jersey that this country that's mad obsessed with them you know great era of success um and and also this this idea that, w that we do unite you know we're the flagship of new zealand like that, that's rightly or wrongly that that's yep. the way we're seen and um and you got to embrace that and the fact that every time an all-black team's picked there's fijian Samoans, tongans you know it's a culture we are new yeah. zealand you know yeah. and we're this uh this great collection of of men who are representing the country and and so bang you you capture that in, a, in the right way and you know it counts for something you know you oh, run yeah. the field at zero zero but I always felt when we, when we, yeah when we got it right we're straight away you know it's worth some it's worth some points at least on the board so uh it's yeah it's it's something special that the All Blacks do have and you know to the credit of the team you know the whole time I was involved and I know it's it's carrying on that the way they they connect and and acknowledge that it's um it, it's it's really well done and it's it's you know the reason the the team you know continues to perform well and it does it empowers and you know like a whole generation like i said you know my brother dawson being you know my my dad wanted him to be an all black and you know like he wanted him to meet all those milestones along the way and i remember like we lost my dad last year as people know they listen to my podcast and I said to my brother the other day, Dawson, because he went to the game um, up at the park, up Pukkura Park, 
and they had the 25 year an, uh, anniversary for the Ranfurly Shield because he was in the Ranfurly Shield team. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember. And he was excited <laughs> to go to the Ranfurly Shield thing. And, and I remember that being the proudest moment of my dad's life <laughs> it, of all the things that my dad got to do and see. And, you know, what all of our kids, I said to Dawson, you gave him the highest point in his life was when you came home with that Ranfurly Shield and you were a part of that Taranaki team. And that was for him the pinnacle, you know. And that that's beautiful because that was yeah. just like, you know, especially when you've lost somebody to and then Dawson to be able to go and celebrate that that you know ran fairly shield with his old mates and and reminisce on those times, you know, that, that stays with you to the to your to the end. You know, yeah. those special moments that you get and that camaraderie that comes with that and all of that that sort of stuff. And and he gave my dad a precious gift, really. By, by being a part of that team, yeah. being, you know, um, that dad was just so proud. And Dawson said to me once, you know, at least you could run across every freaking desert in the world and you still not mean as much as that Ram Fooley Shield. <laughs> and I said, you're damn right. And that's okay. Because he was a rugby <laughs> yeah, it's man. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Because he loved rugby and he loved the rugby teams and the rugby world. And, you know, my dad played, you know, um, what do you call it? First grade rugby until he was 45. You know, yeah. and he only quit because people were telling him he was too old, and then he played touch for another 10 years. You know, so he was just he was a legend. <laughs> he was a legend. And you know, you you carrying all that on your shoulders. You there are you know five and six year old kids looking at you on the screen and like you did with Dorse back then, you know, like yeah, wow, yeah. All these big Taranaki players and stuff, you know, and that's just beautiful. I mean, I had that just just wanting to represent New Zealand and in, in, in something, you know, because I couldn't be in all black because back then we didn't have women playing rugby, much to my <laughs> dad's disappointment. <laughs> um, and actually watching, you know, the girls at the sevens um, in, in, the, in the Olympics. Oh, I just fell in love with that team, man. They were just epic. I mean, Ruby Tui is my new bloody hero. Like, she's just... <laughs> just amazing i think she's just epic um but just to watch the camaraderie of those girls and the 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 performances that they put on and you know that that's um you know i'm glad that women now have the chance to do that type of stuff too you know because that's pretty that's pretty special as well you know seeing seeing girls going in there and giving it everything you know just going hard <laughs> sure and and it's it's um you know you, you speak of the the black ferns but the women's women's rugby is is uh you know it's growing so much not just in new zealand but r around the world and it's um pretty exciting but you know sevens and, and 15s and the opportunity it's giving um so many young women young it's, ladies, uh, yeah yeah it's, awesome. and and for for myself it's really refreshing so you know now I'm working with international rugby and and the player association we deal with both men and women's and the the joy i have working in women's rugby seriously like compared to men's where especially men's 15s it's a lot of established mm. <laughs> I've got to be careful with my words yeah, yeah, here, but, hearing, yeah. <laughs> but it's just so hard. Like to, yeah. to put it simply, it's so hard to get things done. Even if you agree, there's so much. Whereas in the women's game, it's just it's so refreshing. There's just an openness and a an enthusiasm. They just yep, let's get that done. And that's you know, awesome. and, and, and it will get done. And so you you it'll, you'll see. Like the women's rugby is gonna go Explode. great you know, in, in the next few years and and it's because of and the men's game oh, I, I don't like to say it but it, it might not you know have anywhere near the same growth or evolution just because it's stayed in the old ways politics involved yeah, yeah politics. It's, uh, bureaucracy the wrecks money, everything money, doesn't it the money the money at that level is so big that there's so much at stake and so yeah. that's why it just grinds along whereas you know the women's game they're not they obviously Passion they're trying more. to yeah, well they're trying to commercialize on the game but it's it's still it's it's crumbs compared to the men's 15s at the moment mm -hmm. but they'll they'll catch up at a huge rate because they're just open about like at the moment they're motivated by you know having fun being passionate having getting the product out there getting more and more women and girls playing the game so that's amazing yeah. and isn't that though the, that's a really good analogy for everything in the world like that the big old institutions the big bureaucracies are going to be struggling in the future i think 
yeah. whether this, you know, this is completely off topic, but from the governments to the big corporations to the big institutions um, are going to be struggling against these young, nimble, small, exponentially, you know, powered technology based companies and like the rate of change that's coming that, you know, these big state old bureaucratic, not just talking about rugby here, but, you know, um, yeah, governments and, and things are actually going to be on the back foot shortly. You know, I always think of that um, Kodak, you know, the, the company Kodak that used to mm. be the biggest player in the world in photography, right? And they didn't go with digital revolution digital. because yeah. they we went under. And they, because they were, they were too busy trying to protect what they already had, they didn't. They actually discovered digital, you know, photography. They started it, but they didn't pursue it because they, oh, that's going to be a threat to our current existing business. Yeah. That mindset is when you get overtaken by by the young upstarts that come along with enthusiasm yeah. and and they can, you know, on a on a company wide level, they're smaller, they can they're nimble, they can make decisions quicker, they can move faster. And I, and I see this in all areas yeah. happening, you know. So uh, probably hopefully in the rugby, it'll 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 uh, you know brush it off as well. But um, the girls certainly are, are next level. You know, I, yeah, no, I just, they're great, and they're a great bunch. I've got to know uh, a few of them, a few of the Black Ferns. Um, and can you yeah, hook me up all, with Ruby? I want to interview Ruby with and Ruby. Sarah and, oh, they're all they're just such great Kiwis. So yeah, I'm more than happy. Yeah, <laughs> you'd love to chat. <laughs> okay, I know she's pretty busy right now. Everybody <laughs> in the world wants her right yeah. now, uh, and and the other girls are just just amazing. Um, Conrad, any you know like. As we wrap it up now in a, in a minute, so you know now you got to go. But um, what 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 is it that you want to get across? Like, from if we highlighted a couple of points now, like if you were talking to your children, you've got two kids. You know, what do you want them to do in the future? As you know, or what would you, if you were talking to some young kids out there that want to have a have a life in in the sporting world? Yeah. Um, what's some last parting um, wisdom or for, or for the parents of those kids yeah i i think yeah if you're speaking to parents and like the first thing is the value of of, of sport i i think i i just worry a little bit um i know you know i'm working in rugby and there's some crazy things being said about you know the potential harms of playing a contact sport but um you know honestly i've, I've had the benefit of, of seeing it digging a lot deeper into that and and it is not at all, you know, as clear as it's conveyed because of the sensationalism of journalism. And they like to say, oh, kids shouldn't, kids are kids, man. They love playing. If you leave, if I leave my boy and, a, and his next door neighbor, they're going to wrestle, they're going to fight. It's, it's, there's no harm in playing. And, and, but on the flip side, the harm of not playing sport, of sheltering them, of, of oh, thinking, mean, mean. <laughs> of, of sitting in a lounge with a Coke and a bag of lollies oh, is better yeah. for a kid than going and playing rugby because he might knock his head. I, I just, yeah, that, that's yeah. so far from yep. the truth. And yep. um, so that, you know, that would be my, my first um, and... wish for parents and young kids yep. just to play sport. But And then I, I suppose if it's to reflect on what we've talked about, you know, if, if it were the kid that then gets serious about a sport, it, it would be to, to to keep your balance, to, to not lose sight. And if you get put in a bubble because there's a, it's a performance bubble, then that's all well and good. But no, it's a bubble and, and you need to step out of that every chance you get um, and connect with the real world as much as you can because, um, you know, and unfortunately there are... There are dangers and there are risks when you when you are totally invested into a sport, and you know the crazy thing is sport is a great thing. It's it should be enjoyed, and if you're ever not enjoying it, it it's not hard just to talk to someone and 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 step outside your sport to to reconnect with the you know people in the real world, and and then that should give you back your love of the game, and and then um, and then you'll go well and be like. Lisa and I and have a life where you've had a sport that you've loved and it's yeah. given you amazing you opportunities so and lets you meet great people and, and you still come out of it and uh, you're still happy and still meet people but it's just in different, yeah. doing different things. Like this, this has been gold. Yeah. Conrad, thank <laughs> yeah, you so much, so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to doing our, 
speaking speaking gig together shortly and um, that's going to be exciting and um, I'm just yeah really glad to have made your acquaintance and I think that you have such a level approach you know a level-headed approach to this whole thing um, and uh, gave us some great insights today of what it is to be an all black but also what it is to come out the other side and gave us some really good perspectives so thanks for your time today Conrad. Pleasure Lisa.